For today's project, I grabbed a basket from the local store. What I wanted was something that had texture on the side. As you can see, this is perfect, but we don't want our concrete leaking out the holes. So grab some blue tape. It's the best for this project. It has great adherence. Put it on the side layer by layer. Now I want to show you. It's okay when you're putting it on. If you get a few wrinkles in it, just smooth those right out. It's not going to affect the concrete at all. We just want to make sure it's basically waterproof to a point. See that handle on the side? You want to cover that also. Just run that tape up and down. Once it is covered, look for any light that comes through. If not, you're ready to go. The next step is to grab some concrete. This is fast setting concrete. Don't use it if you're not quick, but it's perfect for the job. We're going to mix it up by starting with some cool water. Pour it in the bucket first. That keeps the powder from sticking to the bottom of the bucket. Next, you're going to add the concrete a little bit at a time. This is half a bag and half of that. It is dusty, so make sure you go ahead and use a respirator. Pour a little bit of water in and not too much though. There's nothing worse than mixing too much water at a time and you don't have enough powder. Once it's all mixed up, the consistency we want is something like pudding, like this. Something that's hard but won't drip over the sides. Once you got it, let's go ahead and grab some oil and you're going to mix that into the basket. This keeps basically the concrete from sticking to the side. It doesn't take much. Don't drench it. Just wipe it on the bottom and the sides. It'll be perfect. Now just start putting in the concrete one bit at a time. You can go ahead and pour it. If you have it a little thin, just go ahead and pour it. Mine's a little bit, could use a little bit more water, but go ahead and mix it. Use a glove though if you're going to do it by hand. It will dry out your hands and cause your skin to crack. Now, remember how we got that perfect consistency? Look at this. Smooth it out with your hands and look at that. It's turning out wonderful. Next step is to grab some wood dowels, four of them of equal length. Each one of these is 12 inches long. These are going to be the legs for our stool. Now, on this, want to make sure you don't put it too close to the corners. It'll cause the concrete to break out. You need to have some strength. I put it in about two inches from each side. Twist as you're putting them in, and once you got them in, make sure you take your gloved hand and just press around the sides to make sure any gaps are filled. Let it sit for 24 hours after you make sure they're all straight, and when we come back, it's time to remove the basket. Here we are. 24 hours later, give the sides a little jiggle, and we're ready to put it up on its legs, slowly but surely. Once you get it up on your side, it's time to take the tape off. Now, some of that concrete is going to stick to the tape. That's perfectly fine. Just keep pulling the layers off. Remember, do not worry about the concrete sticking. Just keep pulling it off, and then give the basket a little twist. Remember we put that oil on there? Here it goes, voila, concrete stool. Now, it's a little rough looking, rub your hand over it. We're gonna stain the legs, give them a paint job, and look what we're gonna have. And here's our final project. Painted the legs, it's perfect for the outdoors, just wonderful, and it makes a great addition to the front porch. Take a paper towel and spray it with cooking spray. Take this paper towel and rub it around your container or molds. Take your powdered cement or plaster and put it off to the side. Take just about two to three cups of water, put it into your bowl before you go and add any sort of dye or pigment to this. You're going to want to make sure you have extra water that is dyed off to the side so you can mix it in just in case you need it. Powdered pigment is best to use since the color will be more vibrant and as your stepping stone fully sets, the color will become brighter. Add pigment into your water and mix it. I added just about a tablespoon of pigment into my water since the powdered dye that I am using is very, very vibrant when it dries. Let the powder fully dissolve and fully mix it in. You also probably want to mix a couple extra cups of water, just have it off to the side, or have extra water ready to roll just in case. 
Slowly add water into your powder mixture. Check the packaging for details on water ratio. Keep in mind quickery along with also concretes like that normally measure in actual weight in comparison to cups or any sort of measurement like that. It can be kind of hard to determine exactly how much water you should be adding, but the consistency for both plaster and also quickery or concrete would be very similar. Make sure to wear gloves when you're doing this and also be in a very well ventilated area. You want the consistency to be pancake batter like. So not very liquidy, but it should also still have some texture to it, but not be really, really solid or have large clumps. As you can see in this video, this is the consistency of what it should look like for both plaster along with also quickery. Once your quickery or plaster is fully mixed, scoop some into your mold and spread it around with your hand. Of course, do this with a gloved hand. Fill the container to about the half inch mark or higher. You don't want it thinner than just about half of an inch if you're going to actually step on these. Once you have it filled to your liking, tap your container a few times to flatten the mixture and take out extra air bubbles. After the mixture has sat in the mold for just about 5 minutes, take a doily and center it and press it down lightly. Use your gloved fingertips to press lightly along with also spread it out a bit. Wait the proper amount of time for this to set. It takes about 30 minutes for plaster to set and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for quickrete to set, but not for it to fully set and fully dry. Pull the sides of your mold slowly to release the stepping stone. Flip the container upside down and hold the stepping stone in place. It will slowly release. To remove the doily, pull up on one end and slowly start peeling it up. Definitely go slow so you don't break anything or you don't rip the doily. You can take the doily and clean it and actually use it as a coaster as long as you used a die that was fabric safe. After your stepping stone is fully dry, which can take up to 48 hours, bring it outside and line them up. You may notice that the color has brightened up. Please note Portland cement can support a lot more weight than plaster can. If you are making plaster stepping stones, you're going to want to make sure that you seal them and also use them more so for decoration in comparison to going and stepping on them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!